Mike and Tierney. Mike, what's happening, bud? What's going on, guys? Good all, to talk to you this morning. Likewise, mm -hmm. all is good. You know, we, we, we see a little bit of a slow start in Seattle. We saw this a couple years ago. They figured it out, obviously, and won a Super Bowl. Uh, and the team that you were on. But when you look at some of the issues that are plaguing right now, and one that jumps to mind is the whole Jimmy Graham thing. How, how does this locker room, that locker room that you were just in a couple years, how do they handle this? Yeah, yeah, I think they, I, I think they just um, let Jimmy Graham be Jimmy. I mean, guys are rooting for Jimmy in that locker room, and I know that for a fact. But they don't call plays. They didn't. They don't uh, do teaming um, uh, transactions. They don't. They don't worry about what's going on uh, uh, up upstairs. The thing about Jimmy, he has to understand is to get passes in that offense. This is a running offense. That offense evolves around the running back, the running game, and the quarterback. Um, when he was in New and when he was in New Orleans, it was more of a matchup uh, type of offense where Sean Payton would create plays to match Jimmy Graham up against certain people so he can win the matchups. That's just not how it is in Seattle, you know. And that's why you see guy, a guy like Luke Wilson, the other tight end, uh, the more blocking tight end, getting more passes because the tight ends get their passes in that offense just in everyday offense, just in regular offense, just running the regular plays that are called, and then you do what you have to do with it. But I do think. Um, especially in the red zone. And, and, you know, Seattle traditionally hadn't been great in the red zone. In my opinion, that's because, you know, Russell's shorter. Um, Tiki, you know, those, yep. those, those, those passing lanes get, you know, yep. get, get, get higher. You know what I mean? I think you'll start to see more specialized plays, more matchup type plays for Jimmy as they get in the red zone, but they just haven't had a chance to get down there yet. And they haven't had a real chance to get down there because the offensive line's terrible. I mean, if, if they don't fit, <laughs> I mean, Mike, I'm, what the offensive line is a mess. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. And you know what? You know, they, 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 they've missed on some drafts. I mean, I think they struck gold early in some drafts when, when Pete first got there. And they, they've missed on some linemen here here lately. Uh, but you know what, guys? This group has to get uh, time together. You guys know reps, reps, reps. I mean, with the restrictions and, and uh, you know, in uh, training camp and things like that, you know, the guys' reps are limited. You know, you have Justin Brick going from right tackle to left guard. You have uh, J.R. Sweezy, who played most of his entire life at defensive tackle, a new center, um, and a new right tackle who played tight end in college. So they have to get more game reps together. You know, one of the uh, the other big stories around Seattle was the Cam Chancellor holdout, and we saw the immediate impact when he came. The defense is just completely different. Now they take on a Cincinnati Bengals team that has – been pretty effective and efficient with Andy Dalton and, and A.J. Green and Marvin Jones and all those guys. What's the plan of attack for Seattle against wide receivers and an offensive scheme that can spread the field, not to mention they're running the ball pretty well also? Yeah, guys, you know what? Uh, I'm still mulling over this pick. You know, uh, if I don't pick Seattle to win this game, I can't, I can't ever get on a plane to go back up <laughs> to the Pacific Northwest. You know that, right? Yeah, but, of course. Guys, I, I, I don't know. I, I just no, don't no, no, see. you do I mean, know. You do know. By Cincinnati not knowing, you know. Cincinnati so good. Yeah, Cincinnati you know. Cincinnati is good. Hey, Mike, <laughs> listen. You know. You just have to have the guts to say it into a camera. <laughs> you know, we, we know. We yeah. know Seattle's not going to win this game. Come on. Oh, man. It's going to be a tough one for them. I just don't see how they can do it, you know. Um, I mean, Cincinnati just has so many weapons everywhere. I mean, if you match up and you try to give help with whoever's covering A.J. Green, I think uh, Muhammad Sanu can be a number one in this league somewhere. You know mm. what I mean? You yeah. still have Marvin Jones. You still have Tyler Eifert. And I think an interesting matchup is going to be Cam Chancellor and Tyler Eifert. When they go man, can Cam match up? And uh, Cam usually does match up, but this guy's a little bit quicker. He's not as big, but he, he's a little bit quicker, and he can block. So, uh, this is going to be a, a tough matchup for Seattle. We're talking to Michael Robinson, NFL Network. Of course, he's on uh, every Sunday. Great coverage. If you're not watching the network, you're missing out. NFL game day first at 7 and throughout the week. Total access. You know, I look at the um, couple of early storylines here, Michael, and, and I'm curious how, you know, you view the Falcons now because they look yeah. good and they are good, but are they as good as maybe some people think they are right now? You know what? They, they, they are good, and they're very good. And, uh, Part of it is, um, obviously, you know what they can do on offense. I think Kyle Shanahan will be a head coach in this league in the next year or so. Mm. I mean, what he's doing with Julio Jones, I mean, just watch the film, guys. Just watch the film. He is directly tied to that run game. He literally pulls an eighth defender out of a box. I mean, three, two and three guys are looking at him at every play, and that's why you see the run game thriving. I mean, the thing about Dan Quinn, I spent a lot of time with him in Seattle. He really believes in the power of the mind, the power of good spirits, the power of positive vibes. And it was just a culture change. I mean, some people don't believe in culture change, but I do. I believe in 
you know, if a coach comes in, he's playing music at practice, he shoots basketball in the team in the, in the team meeting room. You know, it's more of a players more of a players atmosphere. And in this day in, in this day in football, guys, you have to be that. Your your players have to like you to go out there and fight for you. And I think Dan Quinn is an example of uh, a guy who the players love and they'll do anything for. Oh yeah, and by the way, he has the best receiver in the game and one of the best quarterbacks in the game. That that couldn't hurt either. Yeah, you know it's interesting, Michael. You say that about the players' atmosphere, which it leads you right into the discussion about the Philadelphia Eagles and what Chip Kelly is trying to trying to Oof. do. Obviously, we, we know his system is interesting. It's compelling. Sometimes it can work, but you got to get first downs. But more importantly, you have to have your team like you. It seems like nobody likes him. He can't be successful, yeah. can he? Yeah. And, and you know what? And you know what, guys? From 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 my from my talking to players up there, and I know a lot of guys up there. If he would just stop with all the conditioning, man, is that what it is? Always... Is that what it is? I mean, they're they're like still conditioning. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, some of these guys are in their you know the mid thirties and things like that, man. And and if you want these guys to to, to survive a, a a sixteen seventeen week season and and then into the playoffs, uh, hopefully. You, you you have to give them something. This is not college, and I think you have to check kind of where Chip came from. Remember, he started off in Wisconsin. He went to Oregon. He never had the best players. You got to think the Pac-10 was known wasn't known for Oregon when Chip first got there. You know what I mean? So he always had to use his system to beat people. Where in the league, if he, you, you and I both know, yeah. it's not about the X's and O's. It's about the Jimmies and Joe. It's, <laughs> it's about the players. That's it's true. about the matchup. That's true. And Chip is getting a, he's getting a hard lesson in that right now. Mm, that's Michael Robinson with us here at NFL Network, CBS Sports Radio, Tiki and Tierney. All right, Mike, I am a diehard Jets fan, and it has been a tough life. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I, I look at my defense, and I know it's not a mirage. I know the defense is awesome, and I know it's going to get better. The Jets for real this season? It seems to look like it. I'll tell you one thing. If they were in any other division than the division with the New England Patriots, I would be I would be putting them in the playoffs. I mean, honestly. Yeah. The thing is, they're quarterback. I mean, I you know, I think it's Pat, Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's serviceable. But he has a ceiling, and he's touching He's almost touching it right now. Mm-hmm. The guy, you know, he, he doesn't complete many passes more than 20 yards down the field. And in this league, T.K., you know, you have to be able to stretch these defensive backs. You have to be able to stretch these defenses because if not, a defense will sit on your run game, they will sit on Chris Ivory, and it will make life very, very tough on you. Yes, they do have a great defense, but that's only going to be able to take you so far. They're going to have to be able to score some points, especially in that division. Yeah, you know, you're right. When you look at the AFC in that division, it's obviously led by the Patriots, but the other team that seems to – uh, at least want to rise to the top is in the other side of the of the country, and that's the Denver Broncos. Now you guys beat them up in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. You, yeah. you took away what Peyton lost Manning. a lot of money that day. <laughs> lost a lot of money so, on that. Only, Thanks, I Mike. Why, I don't, don't know why you bet on it. Yeah, yeah, me neither. My look, bad. Michael, not only is he a suffering Jets fan, he's he he gets crazy with the betting when he thinks that something's <laughs> yeah. going to go his way, and then when it doesn't go his way, he's like, all right, how do I chase this? It's, it's Super Bowl Sunday. You can't chase it with anything. Uh, but one of the issues with Peyton has been the diminishing of his arm and when you yeah. when you take away the things that he does well like you guys did and let him complete three yard passes and knock the crap out of the wide receivers it seems to it seems to cause some struggle are they a team that has enough because their defense is out of this world this year to to stay up there at the top in the AFC and hopefully get Peyton Manning a second championship uh, before his career comes to an end well, you know what? I, I don't know if they're going to get him a championship, but I tell you one thing: that defense is a championship defense. In my opinion, it's the number one defense in the league right now. And I, I don't have a, I don't have a stat sheet in front of me, but I would assume they're up there in the top five in every category. I mean, could you, could you imagine being an opposing quarterback and seeing Demarcus where uh, um, uh, uh, Vaughn Miller, uh, uh, yep. Von Miller on Von the other Miller, side, then a keep to leave, the keep to leave. I mean, Chris, the, the, the list goes on. Trevathan. I mean, yeah, on. it is. They're deep the everywhere. Goes on. But what I think keeps them very elite, um, I know I know Peyton arm, Peyton's arm is diminishing, but what keeps them very elite is Gary Kubiak. The fact that he has that run game, he has that zone scheme, he's compromising with Peyton. He's put him in, he said, look, you know, Peyton, you do well in the gun, I'll put you in the pistol. I need my run game, I need my backs attacking the line of scrimmage. And I think Chip Kelly should call Gary Kubiak for some tips in that shotgun run game. Yeah, mm. you're right. You still can run power out of shotgun. You you can't run yeah, draws. You can still run power. You can't. Yep. You can still run power. You can still run the outside zone. You can still run the inside zone. And actually, 
the mesh point is a little faster for the back, so he's getting the ball a little bit faster. I like running the ball out of the pistol. There you go. It's Michael Robinson. Of course, uh, he's on NFL Network. You see him on Sundays for game day first at 7, and then he's throughout the week, total access, 7 Eastern. Uh, my final thing for, for me here, I, I think we have a feel, just based on the standings, you know, at least for now, who's really good, and I think we all know who's rebuilding. In between, I think, lies some interesting stories. A couple of pretty intriguing 2-2 two and two teams. The Redskins, the Giants, the Vikings, the Chargers. Give us a team that's at 500 right now that you think is poised to make a real run late. You know, um, I, I like the Minnesota Vikings. I love them before the season. I think Adrian Peterson, he's starting to get his he's starting to get his feet back under him. I thought the first couple of games he wasn't quite there yet. He was kind of filling some things out. Teddy Bridgewater kind of, you know, the first couple of games, he looked like a deer in the headlights. I mean, he really did, but the last few weeks, he's he, he's he settled down, and I know North Turner personally. I know he's challenging them. I know, and, and I know North Turner loves to run the football. But another team, um, uh, I like the the Washington Redskins because of the division. Yeah. Because Romo's hurt. Because Dez not around. And I think even when those guys come back, it's going to take those guys a few weeks to warm up. I, I really think. I do think the the New York Giants has they they have a little bit. They have too many deficiencies, um, in my opinion on both sides of the ball to be able to really, really make a strong push.